Basically, I was looking at my phone, and I got a text message from one of my friends that sends me amazing testimonies every once in a while. And I received this link to the uh, 700 Club, and it was this guy by the name of Steve Bancar, and um, it was talking about his exit out of the New Age movement. And I am very interested in the New Age movement and anything that has to do with the occult because I believe 100% it's having a huge influence on culture, whether we see it or not. As I tour public high schools and middle schools, I talk to students. And as you start talking to me, you start realizing that there's more people into the Ouija board than you think. Because there was a movie that came out, Ouija, uh, about a year ago. And there was this huge uh, movement of the Ouija board coming back with kids experimenting. And then you start talking to kids and they're into angel cards and tarot cards. And then you're watching movies of the supernatural and paranormal activities and Harry Potter and... As you start digging into these movies, you see the occult, how it's penetrating the culture, and it just starts off so innocent, like, oh, Harry Potter, it's a story about these kids learning how to go to school to learn, they don't say witchcraft, magic, and it's infiltrating the youth. And I've heard so many different stories of supernatural things happening in homes with kids because of the Harry Potter movie, and this is why I think it's urgent and important that we do expose this. So when I watched the story of this guy, Steve, my guest today, it was his exit on coming out of New Age. So Steve, thank you for, Steven, thank you for being on the show. Thanks for having me. So we have a lot to talk about. We do. And I want you to unload. So I'm <laughs> okay. going to talk less. Okay. Um, but let's get into it. Why don't you give me a little overview of where you grew up and how you even got introduced to the New Age movement? Yeah. Um, born and raised in a Christian household, like a lot of people. Really? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah, like a radically <laughs> Christian household. Okay. Um, homeschooled under a Christian curriculum, uh, in and out of Christian private school. I uh, didn't even hit the public school system until grade seven. Um, so, you know, I knew all the Bible stories growing up in and out of church my whole life. Um, I actually was really, uh, passionate about young earth apologetics for some reason in grade nine. Um, evidence for intelligent design, ev evidence for a young earth, evidence against Darwinian evolution and so forth. I was researching this stuff a lot in grade nine and grade 10. Um, when I really started to, and I didn't really identify as a Christian at that time. Um, if you, if you laid out, you know, uh, the set of beliefs of the Christian faith, I would have said, yeah, I probably consent to those, but I didn't have a, a personal, I didn't have a relationship with Jesus. I wasn't born again. I didn't have the Holy Spirit. Um, so I was basically just a, a walking target for the enemy. And what changed everything for me was uh, I was watching a program on the History Channel uh, at the time. It's called Ancient Aliens. Yes, I and, know it. Yeah, it's become kind of a meme, you know, mm -hmm. the guy with the crazy, wacky hair and a few other characters on there who are pretty funny. But uh, it basically puts forward the idea that all of these ancient cultures in the past, like the Egyptians, like the Sumerians, like the Babylons, like the Mayans, that what they were trying to describe in their stories, what they're trying to describe in their hieroglyphs when they talk about, you know, gods and these supernatural um, beings coming down from the sky, what they're really describing is flesh and blood alien encounters. And they'll show pictures and depictions in these ancient cultures that appear to be spacecrafts or UFOs or alien-looking beings and their theory is that, okay, well, maybe we're not alone in, uh, in the universe. Maybe it's actually teeming with life. And maybe they're, you know, this culture is a billion or two billion years more advanced in terms of their evolution. And they know how to travel uh, through, you know, just through light years in order to get to us. And what we're seeing, all these ancient religions, the reason they started is it's just ancient man trying to, with his primitive mind, understand these alien visitations that he's having. And that to me was, um, at the time when I heard that, that, that seemed to be incompatible with Genesis, you know, it mm -hmm. seemed to be incompatible yep. with six yep. day creationism. Yep. Cause I didn't see anywhere. Where is it say God created the aliens? I didn't see anywhere where, um, uh, you know, if the Bible says that no man comes to the father except through Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, Paul says, uh, one thing can be said with certainty that Christ came to, to die for sinners. Does that mean that for the tens of millions of planets that have intelligent life on them, did Christ have to go and die an atoning death tens of thousands of times over for each alien planet and then 
the Holy Spirit have to dictate to them their own version of scripture, depending on their own unique history. And to me, it was just like, what if that seems like too much to reconcile? Yeah. I'd rather just go with what they're telling me and what everyone who believes in antronaut theory is telling me that Christianity is just one piece of a much bigger puzzle of man trying to understand this infinite intelligence that is God. And so, um, when you start re- researching aliens, yes. for anybody who does this, you know that very quickly you get into stuff that's not just aliens. You're not researching aliens anymore because you start getting into um, what's called contact material where these alien beings end up giving material to mankind. They're saying things to people. When people are having alien abduction experiences, whether or not yep. they're actually cor- they're real and correspond to reality is a second issue – but or how we can understand that's a second issue. But the point is people believe that they're experiencing these things with these alien beings, and these alien beings are always giving them information, and the information is always spiritual in nature. It's always spiritual philosophy, and it's always re- reinforcing the, de- the intrinsic deity of man, that man's divine, that man's an aspect of the creator, and that all the suffering in the world is a response – or sorry, is a uh, – yeah, a response to man's own self-ignorance. He doesn't know who he is. He's forgotten that he's a little God. He's forgotten that he's one with the creator. And so all of this suffering, all of this uh, chaos in the world is because we, don't, we have separated ourselves from unity, from unity consciousness. And so um, I, this is called pantheism. So you got, you got right into pantheism immediately. Pantheism. Immediately, yeah. Yeah, because when I watch those shows, I've seen those shows. You start googling YouTube stuff mm-hmm. and just you know checking out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, I could see that happening. For sure. Yeah, so I started getting into to pantheism, and then I was I was thinking to myself, okay, if God is everywhere, and God is everything, which is what pantheism teaches, um, then God must be me. God must be the substance of my being, and um, in the New Age movement. They'll call this – they'll call God the unified field of consciousness. They'll believe that the universal substance that makes up all of space-time reality is consciousness, an impersonal field of consciousness, and that this impersonal field of consciousness gives rise to all, all the particles, all of the uh, – everything we see in the world. And so everything can ultimately be, re- be reduced down to one single substance, namely this universal field. And I'm an expression and emanation out of that universal field, and so are you. So we are all ultimately God, and if, that, if I'm God – then now I know what Jesus said when he said before Abraham was, I am, because I am too. And wherever there's that presence of I am, there's the identity of, of God. So Jesus is someone who realized he was God, not someone who was born as God in the flesh and, you know, truly man, truly God. He's someone who, uh, just like we have the potential to do, he awoke to his true nature, which is unification with this impersonal concept of God, this impersonal force in the universe, which the Hindus would call Brahman. So everything's Brahman. The self, the Atman, as they would call it, is Brahman. And so, you know, now I've found God. Now I'm meditating. Now I'm practicing mindfulness. Now I'm researching mind science and different anomalies in human consciousness that seem to correspond to this idea of consciousness being a field rather than something created in the brain. And so you're digging into different religions at this point. I'm digging into different, yeah, different religions, yeah. Um, but it, it, it through the lens of new age, new age, new age. Well, a lot. It seems like as I've studied a lot of that stuff, it seems mm-hmm. like there's a. It's just all packaged different. A lot of the different religions and new age, it all kind of. It's the same. There's similar aspects of it, but it's mm-hmm. kind of packaged different. Yeah, it's packaged a little different depending on uh, what the source material re- you're reading is. Mm-hmm. But it ultimately gets reduced back down to the the doctrine of man, which is that man is divine. And really this is um, – Satan's plan hasn't improved at all in the last well, 6,000 years. It's the same why. What did he say? I want to be like the most high God. <laughs> He's, yeah. So, that's Isaiah 14. He said yeah. I want to uh, ascend to the heights of God, right? And then um, Ezekiel 28 is another one. But back in Genesis – Genesis 3, you know, if you eat from this, this tree of knowledge of oh, good yeah, and evil, true. right? What's he say? So basically, here's a tree of knowledge and good and, and evil. Yep. Here's some secret knowledge, some special knowledge, right? If you eat from that tree, you will become as gods. You will become like God, and that's why he doesn't want you eating it is because he knows that you're going to ascend to his height when you eat from the tree. 
And so I you it, know the it, difference between good and evil and yeah. right. You know the difference between good and evil. Um, but his lie was, you know, through secret knowledge, you can become as God uh, through special revelation, special knowledge. And that's the exact same thing in the new age movement. And some will go as far such as, you know, the mother of the new age movement, Helena Blavatsky, openly praising Satan in her book, her main work called the secret doctrine, um, saying Satan's the spiritual father of mankind, you know, because he's the one who broke mankind out of this kind of controlled, bigoted system that Yahweh created. And here comes Lucifer into the rescue saying, hey, you know, here you can enact on your free will and you can Dude, do your own thing. that's a trip. Yeah. So this is something that they teach in Gnosticism that uh, Yahweh is evil um, and he, the evil Yahweh created the world. And then Lucifer comes along and he's trying to empower man and liberate man. And um, it's all about man's own exaltation and freedom, which is really what the whole principle of Satanism is about. If you read the Satanic Bible. I was just going to say it because I've, I've done some research on the Satanic Bible. It's all about that. So it, that's, that's why it's so appealing. That's right. That's, uh, that's right. That's and, why it's so appealing. But, I get it. But that's also why Anton LaVey, the father of the Church of Satan, accuses the New Age movement of stealing its practices and beliefs from Satanism. He, he accuses them of being hypocritical and not attributing these beliefs and these practices to whom they rightly belong, namely the devil. Um, so I, I was kind of naive when I was re researching this stuff. Yeah. And um, I, it started turning into practice. And um, I had an experience where I was literally outside of my body. And I... During meditation? Not during meditation, no. I was having a lucid dream. Mm -hmm. You're conscious in your dream. Now, is that yeah. called uh, astral travel? Yes, astral travel. Okay. Yeah. Lucid dream what that is. Lucid dreaming is not is not astral travel. Some might say it is. Um, it's really not. Uh, lucid dreaming is when you are in a dream and your awareness sets in and you're you're fully conscious that you're dreaming, and you have the state of awareness you have now. Only you're you're aware that you're within a dream world. And I was having one of these dreams. I used to have them all the time when I was in the occult. And um, I remember having a thought in my head. This is so real. I can't distinguish this from real life anymore. Wow. And after I had that thought, I was in my, I was driving my car in my lucid dream. I was pulled up out of my car and I was hovering over the housetops in my lucid dream, um, like 40 or 50 feet in the air. And then above, in front of me, like 20 feet away from me, um, there was a red being and he was, he looked like, he looked like a reptile. He was disgusting looking and he had red skin, black markings on his face, red cloak. And he was staring at me. Um, he, he had pulled me up out of my car and he was looking at me and we looked at each other for maybe three or four seconds and he had a third eye <laughs> between his the two eyes. Eye, yeah. He had a third eye, his third eye, which is kind of the eye in, in, in the new age. It represents like enlightenment and psychic power. He opened his third eye at me and kind of like pulled me into it. And it sounds crazy, but that's what happened. And then when I, it was like darkness for like three seconds. And then when I opened my eyes, I was back in the natural, except I was hovering over my body three feet, four feet in the air and I was lighting up my room, and I sat up in the air and realized I'm floating right now, and I looked around my room, and I'm, I'm, out, I'm out of body. I'm having an out-of-body experience. Right. And then I fought to get back into my body for the next four or five minutes, and I could see my light leg, my spirit man leg. I don't even know what we would call it in, in Christianese, if yeah. you will. Yeah. Something was bouncing in and out of my physical leg. I could see them both. And... um Finally, I got back into my body, got pulled out again when I didn't even want to come out of my body, got pulled out so you again. Have no control at this point. No control. I'm trying to get in and I can't. And once I finally do, I get yanked out again. Wow. And, you know, in the New Age movement, it's this garbage lie that as long as you say affirmations, you'll be protected. Visualize white light around yourself because if there are negative astral entities, which is what their euphemism for demons, yes. Um, they, uh, they kind of respect your free will. They can't do anything unless you allow them to. That's garbage. Yeah. The minute you yield to any type of sin, yeah. they have legal right into your life. You know? You've know, you forsaken the commandments of God, and now you're in a new spiritual territory with a new set of rules, and your free will, your desires don't really matter. Um, they don't have to obey your free will. Nope. You're out of control of protection of, of the Father God. Amen. Yeah, yeah exactly. And so I, I realized I didn't have control, but I finally got back into my body, realized I'm, I was just out of my body. So I got a question for you. Yeah. <clears throat> this is happening. You grew up in the church, mm -hmm. but you were never filled with the Holy Spirit. You never no. had a relationship with God, mm -hmm. but you do have knowledge of God. Mm -hmm. 
how are you tying this in? You're experiencing this, but yet you grew up with knowledge of the church. How are you kind of like putting this all together? The whole time I'm obsessively every single day trying to understand this in light of the Bible, Mm -hmm. in light of Christ, every single day. That's what I want to know. I want to know how God fits into this whole thing, who he is, what he is, you know, uh, who Jesus is. Um, I, I really, really wanted to know. I was really hungry and thirsty for the truth. I figured, you know, I have one life to live. This is a really weird place. Human consciousness is, is amazing. It obviously didn't originate out of a rock seven, you know, seven billion years ago when a lightning bolt hit it, like we're told in, you know, uh, abiogenesis, the natural explanation. It's like, that doesn't make sense. Some intelligence is responsible for this. I need to know who. Okay. But now you've seen this guy, this demon. Now I've seen this guy. And how are you, like, what, what, what's your thoughts about what you've just seen with this guy? I mean, where do you think he's from? Do you think he's a demon, the devil? I, I don't necessarily think he's a demon. No, I, I, that didn't really clue into me. I, I figured he could have been a bunch of things. He could have been a spirit guide. Mm, he oh could, yeah. have been, could have been just some entity living in the astral realm. Which, those are, these are all demons listeners, by the yeah, way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He could have been, I asked someone at a New Age event one time, he could have been a Native American spirit. That was but he sort looked of, like a reptile. He looked like a reptile, but it could, he could have had, they were saying his skin could have been red and it could have been painted. Okay, got it. Yeah. Um, so I didn't really know how to understand that. And this and, is common <clears> in the New Age movement to, to experience these kind of experiences. All the time. All the time. Some, you know what? A lot of the material in the New Age movement, you go to a, a, a book a bookstore, you look at the New Age section, a lot of the material you'll see there is what's called channeled material. Mm-hmm. It's actually given by these entities. So people go into a trance-like state of consciousness. Right. They reach out to what they believe are aliens or spirit guides, and then they're writing things down as this information is coming through. And hence you have... Doctrines of demons. The doctrines of demons, First Timothy 4, one, right? Yes. Um, literally the doct- doctrines of demons. And all the channel material, it's oriented away from Christ. They're going out of their way to tell you how to understand Christ, what the church got wrong, what early Christianity got wrong. That was always a red flag for me. Why are they obsessed with explaining away Christian, Christian fundamentalism? Really? Oh, yeah. Dude, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah, it is crazy. I, I've met a couple psychics and, and girls that have come out of it, but they're mm-hmm. like, yeah, we never had a problem with Jesus. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Because the way they paint the picture of Jesus. Yeah, exactly. But it's, it's this subtle deception where they take him off the throne that he rightfully belongs to on as exalted man god and they lower him down to the level of teacher just a teacher of course he's a teacher but they'll say he was just a teacher he was just a prophet of many many others of buddha of krishna of of gandhi all these guys had something to offer they were all expressing the same christ consciousness the same god consciousness that jesus had and you know what if we want to talk about you know pervasiveness in the culture these aren't small beliefs so the idea so christ christ became Christ by emanating Christ consciousness. So there's Jesus, the man, and then there's Christ, which is a state of highly enlightened consciousness where you're now aware of your implicit unity with God. They would say that that state of consciousness is something that, uh, you know, men all throughout history have had. You know, Jesus is not unique. He's not the first. He's not the last. People have this all the time. And Oprah Winfrey actually has gone on the record saying I could I could have the actual quote with me I should have brought it saying that you know I used to believe she's saying this to her live studio audience she's answering a question from the audience saying I used to believe Jesus came and died for my sins and everything like that um but then I realized through reading some of this other material that what he was really doing was teaching us how to access the infinite Christ consciousness that is in each of us. I was like you, Margit. I thought Jesus came, died on the cross, that Jesus' being here was about his death and dying on the cross, when it really was about him coming to show us how to do it, how to be, to show us the Christ consciousness that he had and that that consciousness abides with all of us. That's what I got. That's That's what I got. Thank you. And what I hear you saying, feel you saying in this book is, is that this book isn't about believing. This book is about what you come to know for yourself. Yes. Yeah, what you become to feel for yourself. Yes. And that what you're saying is that God, in the essence of all consciousness, isn't something to believe. God is. Yes. God is. And God is a feeling experience, not a believing experience. And if and if your if that your religion is a believing experience, if God for you is still about a belief, then it's not truly God. Makes that human beings make is believing that there is only one way, 
to live That's and right. that we don't accept that there are diverse ways of being in the world that there are millions of ways to be then a human how do you being please and, God? and many ways no but many paths to what you call God that and her crazy. path might be something else and when she gets there she might call it the light but her loving and her kindness and her generosity brings her if it brings her to the same point that it brings you it doesn't matter whether she called it God along the way or not and I guess the danger that could be on that I mean it's it sounds great on the onset but if you really look at both sides I there could couldn't possibly be just one way what what about Jesus what about Jesus only one way. There is one way and only one way and there that is through Jesus. Jesus. There couldn't possibly be with because a million you of people say in the world. There possibly That's how I understand him now. And you know, this is Oprah Winfrey, okay? This is one of the most influential influential people in the world. Yeah. You know, in the last hundred years, easily teaching this doctrine of Christ consciousness that man's divine and Christ was trying to teach man how to access his own divinity. Um, and it's these books that they pick up, and which is the doctrines of demons, and it just opens it. It just takes away the deity of, of Christ. It does. It takes away the deity of Christ, or it it um, it uh, they, some will affirm the deity of Christ, but they'll supplement that by adding in, well, everything is divine. Everything. Everything's deity. Yeah. There's nothing that's not deity. So Jesus isn't that special. Yeah. Um, so basically, this this I was in I was in school at the time, at university, uh, to be a philosophy major. And after that astral projection experience, I went into class and they were having a debate. It was ancient Greek, uh, Greek and Roman philosophy. They're having a debate about the existence of the soul. And I was like really satisfied and felt like I had really tapped into something special that God was leading me down the right track because these questions that mankind has been asking for thousands of years, I just found out, you know, a few hours ago. I just found the answer. Yes, the soul exists. Yes, it can disconnect from the body. I just experienced it. I thought in the, that in the classroom. I didn't say that. I was thinking it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking it. Um, so that ended up turning into uh, I needed to create some social media platform where I could start sharing my research, okay. sharing this stuff. And the t stuff I'm describing, this was just like the tip of the iceberg. I really got into some weird alternative science, pseudoscience. Um, and I knew a lot of it at the time. And so I was like getting asked by my brother's friends a lot about chakras, about reincarnation. And I was like, okay, I need to put this all in one place where I can write articles and just put it out there to the world. And within, you know, a year and a half, my Facebook page grew to 500,000 likes. That's amazing. Yeah, it was crazy. And uh, that was because I had really big – I was part of a network online. There was other New Age pages that were all just exploding because people – People are searching. Yeah. People are searching. You know? You know, it says, you know, we're all made in the image of God. And it says in Ecclesiastes 3.11 that God's put eternity into the heart of man. So, right, you so know, I'm searching for that. Right. C.S. Lewis says that um, something to the effect of the fact that our heart yearns for something beyond this world proves that this is not really our home. And everyone's built with that. Everyone has that. And in fact, the, the, the posts that ended up doing the best were ones about the nature of the afterlife, you know. Um, things like reincarnation, what happens when you die, does heaven and, or hell exist? Um, because people there are searching, at least, you know, I, th I thought I was searching, but I set up parameters in which I wanted to search. Yeah. I defined those boundaries and said, within these boundaries, I'm going to search. You know, I didn't want to open up the Bible and read the Gospels as part of my searching. I just didn't do that because I knew something in there was going to convict me and confront my lifestyle, my worldview. Nobody wants to do that in the New Age movement, really, because that's nobody wants to deny Christ. They just want to redefine Christ and then accept him. Everyone knows that Jesus is the man. He's wow. the figure. It's That's kind of the general... They'll say, like, he, they put him on a pedestal. They really, really do. Um, but they just redefine him so they don't have to really submit to his he lordship. Says, yeah. Yeah. Um, so so this so your blog your Facebook it's blowing up you're having high impact I mean you're getting mm -hmm. how many views a day I mean remember you're saying it was yeah 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 I I made a website after the Facebook page I made a website and my website was getting um, you know two hundred thousand to three hundred thousand uh, views a day on it got it and so it was one of the biggest in the world at the time as far as new age <coughs> new age content is concerned and this was also uh, 
the enemy started hooking you up too. You started making money off this whole thing. Right? Yeah, he hooked it up. You know, I mean, he always does. But he 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 comes back and he he wants a. Uh, he comes back. He's like the devil at the door. He wants he wants you to pay him back. You yeah, know? <laughs> yeah. He'll be back. He's gonna hook you up. He's gonna hook you up money, but he's gonna come back to get it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, he hooked it up. You know, uh, it was, you know, thirty grand a month, forty grand a month off ad revenue. And how old are you at this time? Twenty one or twenty. Twenty one, making thirty grand a month. You're living your dream. Satan's like, I'm here. You go. You keep spreading the lies. Yeah. Keep deceiving people, and I'm going to pay you for it. Yeah, and I had I seemed to have my whole life ahead of me. You know, I was only going to build more connections, yep. and I was planning on uh, writing a book. I didn't even have a YouTube channel at this time, uh, an active one, and I was like, I could, I could just start a YouTube channel. I could write books. I could do tours. I could continue on with this website. I had another website fully ready to launch that I just put like five grand into building out, which I thought was going to be a staple in the community. I was like my whole life. You're going you're to be a millionaire at this point. I mean, it's like yeah. everything's lining up. Yeah, exactly. And I'm working from home, you know, maybe three hours a day tops. And I, great. I make my own hours. Yeah, it was, I thought, you know, I thought it was God rewarding me. Yeah. I thought. That's interesting. Yeah. I thought, you know, the Bible says, I remember sitting in my sports car, which I had bought cash. And I remember thinking to myself, I was driving, pulling into my drive when I told my dad, I was like, I was just arrogant. Was oh, just we got, arrogant. okay, yeah. We got to talk because your parents are Christians. Oh, yeah. Okay, we got to get on that soon, but yeah, keep yeah. talking. Talk. Yeah, I pull out of my driveway and I tell him, I'm like, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you as well. I was so deceived. I thought I was really seeking God. I thought I was doing God a favor by waking people up to just a higher state of living, a higher state of consciousness, you know, pulling but, people out of materialism into spiritism. But that is that is legit, though, because the enemy has come to deceive. He's the father of lies. Yeah. He's the dragon of old. He he will deceive you. You, mm -hmm. you won't even know you're deceived. This is for the listeners. You won't even know you're deceived, but the enemy will come in subtly. It starts just... Dude, think about how subtle it started. You're watching TV at home. Just this, this show on TV, and then now look at the years of what what the Saint, what Satan did started deceiving you to where mm -hmm. you're at. Now you're having mm -hmm. outer body experiences, mm -hmm. and I can imagine so much other stuff happening. Mm -hmm. And then you're just popping this verse saying, "Seek ye first the kingdom of God." That is deception at its finest. Oh yeah, absolutely. Well, it says in Second uh, Corinthians four that Satan has blinded the minds of the unbelievers, lest they should see the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. I was blind. Like, I literally could not see. I didn't have the Holy Spirit. I didn't have a spiritual discernment from God. I did know and, and sensed intuitively that um, there's, something, there's something more to Jesus, yep. which everyone, generally everyone, you know. You know what? The Bible says in Romans 1 that uh, God has clearly revealed himself in nature, even his, um, what does it say, his internal nature and divine power, such that no, no man has an excuse. Man's without excuse. Right. We have a, one, one general re revelation of him in nature, the things that have been created, and a second general re revelation of him in, in conscience, in the law that's been written on our hearts. And so when we hear the words of Jesus, when we uh, sense his presence, our spirit man is like, that's my maker. That's my creator. Like, that's not just another guy. That's the one who made everything. He's Lord over everything. I think there's something implicit in us that no recognizes the voice of its maker. You know what I mean? It recognizes yeah. the voice of its father, even if it's been alienated and estranged through sin, which it has been. Um, we've been cut off from relationship with God such that, you know, it says we're dead in trespasses and sins. It says that, you know, we're even in Hebrews, you know, it says we're illegitimate sons. You know, yep. because we were, we belong, we're the, we're, we're the sons of someone else, right? Ephesians 2, we're um, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience. I was a son of disobedience, but I didn't know it. I had absolutely no clue. I thought I was the son of God. We're all, we're all God's children relationally. And I thought I was doing his will. And during this time, I'm absolutely morally depraved, absolutely morally perverse. My conscience is seared. I'm living a double life. I can lie to people straight to their face and feel nothing. Really? Yeah. I can hurt people and feel nothing. I, um, I got used in my teenage years, I got used to silencing the voice of my conscience. And when, when the New Age movement, you know, part of the New Age movement tells you to disidentify from your feelings and from thoughts in your consciousness. Really? Because what they'll say is you are the background awareness that is aware of what's going on 
within the play of consciousness. There's something beyond the thinker and the activity that is aware that these things are occurring. And so you don't want to you want to identify with the observer and just rest as the presence of pure consciousness and rest as the observer. You don't want to get into you know, the thoughts and figuring out all these things. It's just the mind being the and mind. That's where the Holy Ghost start, is, is constantly drawing you. Sure. You know, that's, from a young age, it's, it's always that Holy Spirit because, you know, the job of the Holy Ghost is to draw people to himself. Yep. So you're, there's the, they're teaching you how to shut down oh, yeah. the Holy Ghost. How to shut down the Holy Ghost and how to shut down your own conscience. Your own conscience. When your own conscience is telling you, hey, like, you shouldn't, you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't be saying that. You get used to snapping out of it and saying, no, that's a judgment. That's just a label. Um, that's just the ego. And so you do get used to silencing the voice of your conscience. Dude, that's crazy. Yeah. New age is mm-hmm. a, uh, it's a huge industry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. Just how, you know, some of the best selling books of all time, um, things like the Celestine prophecy, you know, 30, 40 million copies. Um, they're new age books. Like when, when you look at surveys that have come out recently, um, we see that 40% of Americans meditate at least once a week. That's crazy. Break down. What is what is the downfall of meditation? What does it do? <laughs> the downfall. Because there's Christians that meditate. Yeah. I, meditation class. The worst, I mean, I guess the, the real primary concern with it is, well, obviously the Bible tells us to fill our minds with the things of Christ, all things that are wonderful, all things that are pure. Think on these things. Yes. Right? Nowhere does it say sit there, empty your mind of everything, empty your mind of all belief, Empty your mind of all concern. Empty your mind of all uh, all content. Let all your defense systems down. Never address anything that comes up and just sit there. And when you're just sitting there, you have no defense systems. How can I be sober-minded and vigilant because the devil's a roaring lion seeking to devour whom he may? How can I be vigilant and careful? How can I cast down every thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of God if I'm all these thoughts against the knowledge of God are pouring in and I'm training myself to not sit there and just let them be. You're trained one hundred percent against what the Bible teaches. Yeah, you're trained to you're trained yeah. to cast down every thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, right? You're not but the New Age movement will tell you when you're meditating and thoughts come into your mind, just let them be. Or as Ram Das will say, love your thoughts. When they come up, love them. Don't judge them, love them. And the Bible says, No, you're supposed to cast out. Cast out you know, cast down vain imaginations, you know, you're supposed to test these things against scripture. Um, and so you're, you have all these thoughts pouring in and you're getting used, you're training yourself to not compare them with the word, to not cast them down, to not, you know, uh, assess them in light of your conscience and your convictions. You're supposed to just love them and allow them to be as they are and not identify with them. And you're desensitizing your conscience and you are letting down your defense systems for demonic influence, whether it be thought or just spirit. I mean, it's a pagan practice. You can't be in a position like that, do something the Bible tells us not to do and think that you're going to be exempt from demonic influence. But I want to expose something else because I was yeah. watching some of your videos last mm-hmm. night. And that video you were talking about, the idols in, mm-hmm. in your house. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, talk a little bit about that because there's a lot of people that have these, uh, they go, they travel to different countries and they mm-hmm. get like these crazy masks from like mm-hmm. Africa yeah, or yeah. they have like the Buddha mm-hmm. or they have like Hindu mm-hmm. idols or even like the God with the, the, the it's like a woman face and then it has like a, like a mermaid body. I think <laughs> you know what God yeah. that is, you know, there's like, sure, sure. there's all these different gods, you know, yeah. from different religions, but just the innocence of like, Oh, you know, I collected these from the world. And I have them in my house. Tell us about that. Yeah. Um, I, I would say from scripture, if we look at what the Bible has to say about, you know, religio spiritual practices from pagan nations apart from Israel, what you see is in Leviticus 17, 7, when Israel goes apostate and starts serving these gods of other nations, it says they were sacrific- making sacrifices unto goat demons, right? And De- Deuteronomy 10, 22, when they do it again, he sa- the Bible says that they were sacrificing to demons that were no gods. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 10, uh, verses 20 to 22, he says, I imply that what pagans offer unto idols, they offer unto demons. He says, you can't sit at the table of demons and the table of the Lord. You can't drink the cup of devils and the cup of the Lord. So we're told in scripture, you know, the idol in and of itself, it's a piece of wood. Yep. It's just rearranged molecules. It doesn't have any, intri- any power in and of itself. But we're told there is a spirituality behind this idol that it's pointing to, that it's connected to, yep. right? 
and that this spiritual reality is demonic in nature. And so when, when the Bible says, you know, uh, that what they offer unto idols, they offer unto demons, that doesn't, like, demons aren't just present on the idol when an offering is being made. It's not, they don't just appear there all of a sudden when a bowl of grapes is in front of a Krishna idol. They're there when the bowl of grapes isn't there. They're connected to it. And so when you have things in your house that are implicitly connected to beings in another realm, you're inviting, you're inviting, I believe you're inviting, you're giving demons leeway into your home. The door is right open. The door is open. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the first things the Holy Spirit showed me when I got saved was I had all these idols in my house and I could sense like just stir in the spirit, like really scary stuff going on in the spirit. And it was because I had all these new age books and I had all of these idols in my house and I threw them out and then the, the spiritual atmosphere cleaned out. Well, like, like the, the book of Acts, remember talk, <laughs> it talks about that story when they, uh, they burn all the scrolls, yep. right? They don't, they don't sell them. They don't move them out into the garden because they still like how they look when they realize this is not of God. This is idolatry. This goes against scripture. They burnt them. They destroyed them. Right? We don't need to be recycling idols back into the satanic kingdom. Yep. Um, and so some people will say, well, I have all these old New Age stuff. Can I sell them? You know, crystals, can I sell them? No, throw them out. That's the biblical precedent is that you burn them. So I, I, got, I got a quick story. I mm -hmm. um, don't want to take too much time. But there was a girl that her family was into. Uh, they, they've grown up having supernatural stuff. They were all atheists in their house where like, mm -hmm. paintings would be falling off their mm -hmm. house and the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And they were actually having um, Harry Potter demonic things showing up in their kid's room that was nine years old, locking mm -hmm. the doors and mm -hmm. like these things. Mm -hmm. So they were calling me from Germany and I'm praying with them. I'm like, hey, you got to clean your house out. What's in your house? So they got rid of, I'm like, do you have supernatural videos in your house? So she was going through, she deleted every, uh, threw away stuff. Then she's like, it's still happening. I'm like, is there anywhere else in your house? Then she went upstairs in her attic. She found more movies, supernatural movies, you know, of like paranormal activities. She threw all of that stuff out and she says, there's still stuff happening in my house. I said, is there books? Is there CDs? Like, you got to get rid of anything that's open in these doorways. Mm -hmm. Well, it turned mm -hmm. out she found a book that her grandfather gave her. It was a book that Hitler wrote from way back wow. when he was around. And she's like, well, it's, 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 a pr it's priceless. You know, I go, dude, that thing is straight demonic. Mm -hmm. You got to burn that thing. You got to get rid of it. So she ended up getting it, burning it, getting rid of it, and the supernatural stuff stopped happening in their house. Mm -hmm. Doorways. Doorways, yeah. It says in Ephesians 6, we war not against flesh and blood, but against cosmic powers and principalities and spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. And they have their own weapons. They have their own propaganda pieces. And if we have their ammunition in our house, why would we think that they're not also in our house? Like we're literally just taking a step into the wrong kingdom. And I, um, I didn't know I was doing that. Um, so I'm completely entrenched in this stuff, thinking I'm doing God's, God's will. And uh, the whole time I'm completely morally perverse. And what happened was I realized... Um, I don't know if the, God started like quickening my conscience or the Holy Spirit started doing some kind of work. I mean, he must have been drawing me, but yeah, totally. things that I had been doing and suppressing and lying about, I couldn't continue doing it. It just didn't sit well with me anymore. And it reached a point where it was so close to the surface of my being that uh, the girlfriend I was with at the time, um, she was like, you, you need to tell me like you can't go to the grave holding on to this stuff. And I was virtually living a double life in our, in our relationship. And so um, I confessed everything, like every conscious memory. I wasn't actually like going around sleeping around with other people, but it was pretty much everything but that, yeah. um, everything but physical. And so I confessed, you know, I've been lying about this, I've been lying about that. And um, I saw the impact that that had, the trauma that created, that wrecked me, wrecked her, wrecked me. So we go back to my mother's house and she's a born again Christian. She's this whole time she's praying for me. This whole time she, you know, thinks I'm lost and deceived, but she is loving on me. Like she accepts me, even though she doesn't accept my beliefs. And I didn't get offended that she didn't accept my beliefs. I, she accepted me. You know, some people get offended when their beliefs get questions. Like who, your beliefs aren't you. You hold certain beliefs. Your beliefs don't, they aren't you. Right. You're a person. Right. So my mom was loving me as a person, but disagreeing with my beliefs. And so just being really supportive. I don't think my dad knew the gravity of what I was doing, what I was involved with. He was just excited that, you know, he could support me and me being successful in something. Yeah. Um, but my mom asked us if we were willing to give our lives to the Lord yet, because she's like, Steve, you know, you were raised Christian. 
you've always had some kind of intuition connection to Jesus. Are you ready to give your life to the Lord yet? And I was wrecked. I was like, okay, I'll say a prayer of salvation. Um, we both said a prayer of salvation. And it was that, I mean, you went through hell. I don't want to discredit that. Your whole life's falling apart here. Mm -hmm. And you're just like, yeah, I'll just like, how, how, like what? I mean, being where you were at, how can you just say that easy? Like, because my prayer of salvation was not so much I'm going to submit my life to your lordship. Yeah. My prayer it? of salvation was I'm going to <laughs> seek you for who you are. I'm going to stop being dishonest about oh, my okay. seeking. Yeah. And I want to, like, I, I was saying words like I give my life to you, whatever. But in my spirit and in my mind, it's like, Jesus, if you're real, like, I need to know. If you're real. I, I, need, to, I need to stop trying to pretend that you're someone you're not. I want to know who you are exactly as you are. And so the That's next, dope. yeah, so the next two weeks went by and, and nothing really changed in my life, still living in sin, still having, you know, all the occult stuff in my house and whatever. And, um, it reached a point where, uh, I had to confess a whole nother round of sin and, uh, it was worse than the first one. And it was just bad. It was just bad. I was depraved. I was completely depraved. So I confessed this whole second round of sin and I, I, that was when I really saw myself in the mirror. Like, I'm dirty. Like, I'm evil. You know, the Bible says that you once were darkness, and now you're light. I was darkness. You know, I was an image bearer, but I was spiritually dead and dark. And I, I saw in my, in front of me, ever, my brokenness, my sin against the holy God, and the fact that I knew I had, I, I had done something, I had sinned against humanity. I had sinned against God. And I was so broken. My thoughts were so twisted. My mind was so jacked up from all the sin. I could not, I couldn't fix anything on my own. I, I had nothing. I had no options, no hope. The Bible says, you know, we were with, without hope and without God in the world prior to Christ um, and in Ephesians 2. And so I went outside one night on the back balcony of my house and I fell at the feet of the Lord. And I was like, I'm, I'm genuine. I apologize. I, re I need you. I repent. I'm sorry for the life I lived. And I was, I was bawling. I was just crying on my face. I was like, I have nothing. I have nothing. I need you. I'm sorry. And um, that's when I encountered his presence for the first time. What was that like? Um, it was, he was really, really um, making sure I knew who he was. Yes. It was, for me, it was less about you know, I wasn't reaching out saying, Lord, I need love. Yeah. I need love. It was, uh, I need answers. And I need hope. And uh, um, just completely being consumed by his presence around me and, and knowing the simplicity of it all. It's the Jesus of the New Testament. He's the son of God. He died for my sins. Jesus is Lord. That's all it is. That's all I could say in my head. He is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Dude, that's amazing. And the Bible says no one says Jesus is Lord, but by the Holy Spirit. And, and what was crazy to me was not only was this presence, I, it felt like it was in front of me. It felt like he was in front of me, but it was also filling me. It was also inside of me now. And I, uh, I was listening to the sounds around me in, in nature, like in the spirit. I was detecting what was going on while he was there. And like the sounds of nature, they were, they were glorifying him. They recognized him when he showed up. I could, I don't know if God was just showing, like I, <sighs> somehow they knew, you know, creation knew who he was, you know, creation's like the Kings here, you know? <sighs> and, uh, I, I sensed somehow, I don't know if the Holy Spirit showed me that they sensed it, but I'm like, if even creation itself cries out, you know, I'm done. I'm done. So that's when I went back inside and uh, the Holy Spirit started showing me <laughs> the deception, the flaws, the agenda, and everything I had researched. Um, the biggest one was this obsession with aliens that I had, I was putting pieces together, you know, all of these cultures that were visited by these aliens, they were all obsessed with human sacrifice. Really? Oh yeah. 
they don't tell you that on ancient aliens. They all believed that these beings were supernatural. None of them, there's not a single ancient text in the world that attributes these beings as coming from another planet. None. They all believed they were spiritual in nature and that their way to appease and connect with them was through blood sacrifice. And I'm thinking, wow, that's kind of a big deal. I can see that demons are trying to set up all these world religions to kind of murk up and confuse people and lead people away from what I, what I just experienced. Every, all of this is about what I just experienced. Everything. Everything's about him. This whole life is about him. I thought that was narrow and bigoted and whatever. It is narrow. The Bible says narrow is the way that leads to life and few there be that find it. It is narrow. The truth is narrow. The truth is exclusive by nature. But I, I had the truth living in me now. And I remember, st- I remember being like, oh my gosh, I've been wrong. It wasn't guilt. It wasn't guilt and condemnation. It was just, wow, I was wrong. Yeah. And I remember staring at my bookshelf and I had all these books lined up. And I remember peace, just the peace of God. You never have to ask who, who, who God is ever again. He lives in you now. You, he just showed you who he is. And so I repented online. I told people, you know, I, I sounded kind of, <laughs> to people I probably sound schizo or something. Yeah. I was like, I apologize for leading you astray. So th- this is immediately after you go to the computer. This is like a day later, day after, yeah. mid-day so later, maybe two thoughts. days after. Dude, amazing. Yeah, and I said, I'm done writing New Age articles. <laughs> I apologize. This is all a demonic setup to keep us away from salvation in Christ alone. And Jesus is real. He's Lord. He just revealed himself to me. I sent out mass emails to my you know, 90,000 email list telling them about Jesus, telling them I just encountered Christ, telling them to stay tuned because I'm going to make a testimony video, sharing with them what I had just experienced. Um, you know, I was managing two community groups at the time, you know, totaling like 70 or 80,000 members. And then my Facebook page, which was 750,000, I'm telling them all, like, Jesus is real. I just experienced him. And that was my initial testimony video that I put up where I'm in my car describing what happened to me. Is that the one that's on your YouTube channel? That's the one where I'm sitting in the car. I'm saying, hey, guys, some of you may know me as Steve from Spirit Science. Plug your Memphis. YouTube channel right now so people can go watch it. Yeah. What is it? Uh, uh, it's just Stephen Bankers, YouTube.com YouTube. slash Stephen okay. Bankers. Yeah, and just go to uploads, and it's the first video I ever uploaded. And I didn't have any Christians online following me at that point. I was like, hey, Jesus is real. You know, we don't have to get, you know, all tied up in a knot over this. It's just the truth. And I shared with them, you know, my journey through it and what I experienced. So what happened? Were people um, freaking out? Yeah. Um, more people, <laughs> a lot of people were like, I'm so happy you found your truth. Oh, yeah. And it's like, I don't want my truth, and I don't care about your truth. I want the truth, you know? I don't want, truth is not some subjective personal thing. It's like, I appreciate, I didn't say that, but I'm like, you know, I appreciate, you know, your support, but, you know, Jesus really says, says that he's the way and the truth, not a way and a truth. It actually says in John 18, Jesus says, I came to testify, I came to bear witness to the truth, and whoever is on the side of truth is on my side. And then Pilate asks, what is truth? So anyways, there was that group of people who was like, yeah, great, you know, you found one of many paths, we will celebrate that. And there was others who realized, okay, well, you're implying that everything we believe in is demonic and false. False. And that you're also implying that me and all my relatives who didn't believe in Jesus were going to hell, right? And there's really strong impl- implications of the gospel. And so I had people, you know. I mean, just, knowing, and even you, it, everyone's realizing that they've been believing a lie for how many years? Yeah. Everything is not real, what they've thought. Yeah, exactly. That's hardcore realization. That's a hardcore realization, especially when people were looking up to me for answers. They trusted my Yeah, you were like the guru things. in a sense. Yeah, not so much a guru, well, but I kind yeah. of I kind of mediated that between them and the gurus. I kind of explained how and why things like that were true. But you were a spiritual leader to them. Sure. Yeah. And so to hear to, for me to like, you know, coherently explain why it's wrong and to show from videos why these things are wrong, it was it was throwing a lot of people for a loop, you know. Um, people tell me to kill myself, rid myself off the face of the earth. Um, when they told me those things, I felt literally nothing inside because God's with me. He's, he's with me. You, you don't understand. You just don't understand. Um, and you know, so there was that. And then there was also people in the new age movement who were listening in and they're like, okay, we followed him for a long time. I'm wondering if there's anything to this, you know, he's been trustworthy. He's never had anything like this happen before. Let's listen and see and kind of keep tabs and see what, what's happening. And I have um, 
you know, a lot of people who have messaged me saying, hey, like your videos have led me out of the New Age movement. Actually, you were talking at the beginning of the show about like tarot cards and angel cards and everything like that. There's this woman who is uh, one of the best sell selling New Age authors of all time. Her name's Doreen Virtue. You can go to any Kohl's, any Barnes & Noble, any bookstore, and if you go to the New Age section, you'll see Doreen Virtue angel cards all over the place. She was the angel card person um, in the New Age movement. You know, 50-plus publications in the New Age movement. Hay House is all-time bestseller, which is the ma a major New Age uh, publishing house. Um, she also had a encounter with Christ back in, I believe, the beginning of 2017, where she had a vision of Jesus ended up realizing he is who he claimed to be. He's the Jesus of the New Testament, got baptized, has also completely repented of everything online, saying, I apologize. This is all not true. Like a follower, following bigger than mine, than mine was. Like massive, massive following. And uh, saying, you know, Jesus is Lord, the Bible's true, it's the word of God. And these things that I was once teaching are dangerous. And she's repented. She's not receiving royalties from any of her past things. She's trying yes. to get her, names ta her name taken off. She sold out of her old life. Um, what, what, has there been a big big response of people uh, coming back to the Lord or getting out of New Age from, from her? From her, yeah. Absolutely, from her. And she reached out to me and she was like, Steve, your videos really helped me when I was transitioning out of oh, yeah, out true. of the New Age movement. Yeah. So there has been uh, – that was a, that was like amazing because I reached out to her saying, oh my gosh, you're a Christian now. No way. And she's like, you know, I'm really happy you reached out to me because um, – I watched your videos. They really encouraged me when I was making that transition. That's amazing. Where, where is she from? She is from, she was from Hawaii. Yeah. And she just moved to Washington now. I have an interview with her on my channel, actually. It's the most recent upload I did. I have I, to check it out. Yeah, I'm interviewing her, just talking about her journey through the New Age movement and everything. Um, but basically, so the, the fruit of my experience ranged from other New Agers yeah. being edified and encouraged by what I was sharing to people telling me to kill myself and whatever, um, and then everything in between. Um, so I ended up making. We have, we have four minutes left, so minutes. let's uh, finish it up and definitely encourage people that may be in in it or yeah, you know whatever however you want to. End yeah, this. yeah. I've made a uh, a website since then, and a Christian apologetics website. I was really into Christian apologetics even when I was in the New Age movement for some reason, just because I like the arguments for God's existence. So I have a website called ReasonsForJesus.com. And, um, you know, there's a lot of articles on the New Age movement and on, you know, the reliability of the Gospels, on the evidence for the resurrection of Jesus. And um, actually, I'm going to be, I'm working on a book right now that's going to be out by the end of the year on the New Age movement. I'm co-authoring it with someone else who came out of the New Age movement. Um, we're not totally sure on the title yet, but uh, so there are going to be resources. There are resources already to put into people's hands if they have questions, if they want to know, hey, what about crystals? Hey, what about Christ consciousness? Hey, what about yoga or, or channeling or whatever? There's articles. There's things available on my, on my website and whatnot. Um, I would definitely like to encourage people uh, into, <laughs> no, just stop suppressing the truth in unrighteousness. That's really what it all comes down to is that we suppress the truth in unrighteousness. We know that the God revealed to us in nature is not just some abstract general idea of God. It's a personal God. It's a personal intelligence. And we all have this intuitive knowingness that the one who made everything is somehow connected to Jesus Christ. I would encourage people to seek him out. The Bible says whoever seeks shall find, whoever knocks the door shall be opened unto him. Jesus says, I will by no means turn away those who come to me. Right, it says you, when you seek me with all your heart, with all your heart, you will surely find me. How do people do that for listeners right now? If they're like, I want to find Jesus, what does that look like? That looks like you saying, Lord, it, being sincere, recognizing that you're an image bearer before God, but you're also fallen. You're in a state of sin. You need His forgiveness. You need His forgiveness. He's a holy God. We have defied His moral standard. We've committed sin, and we're therefore severed from relationship with Him, and we're worthy of his judgment. And so it's Jesus. If you're real, please reveal yourself to me. I want to know. I need to know. I need to know who you are. If you love me, if you're really my creator, if you're really my savior, please draw me, show yourself to me and then get, get, and then you need to now meet him in the middle, if you will, and read, read his words, see what he says about you. See what he says about himself. Uh, the best place to start is probably the Gospel of John because he has so much to say about himself and humanity in there. 
And we have to remember Jesus Christ is a person. He's kind of like you and me. He has a personality. He has emotions. He has a body still, you know, he's approachable. Just like I'm talking with you, we can talk Jesus, just have an ordinary conversation. Even if you don't, I've had someone come up to me, I don't know how to pray. Tell Jesus, dear Jesus, I don't know how to pray. Help me pray. Jesus, I don't know where to start in my seeking for you, but I, I, want, I want to know you if you're real. Please draw me. And he will work with that 100. He promises you will find him if you seek him. So if you're willing to seek him, you're willing to ask him and approach him, he's a, he's a person, he's gonna to respond to you and he's faithful to fulfill his promises over and over in scripture. And that's it right there. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Jesus wants to reveal himself to you. Call, whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Thank you, Stephen, for being on. Thank you.